giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakadash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the 144,000 and the rest of the elect. This is Brother Tazapahi with you again with another lesson. And as you see the title of this lesson, Grace Through Fire, all right, I took that from a saying in the world that goes grace under fire, which deals with keeping you cool and calm, maintaining your reserve under attack, all right? Whatever that attack may look like. Well, here, you know, us, as the men of the Lord, as his servants, the prophets, we're constantly under attack, all right? And we also have grace, so we should be exhibiting grace as the title goes, through the fire, because we know from Zephaniah, I'm sorry, we know from Zechariah 13, uh, beginning at 8, and uh, you know what, let's go ahead and read that, all right, Zechariah 13 and 8. All right, so, damn it. Zechariah chapter 13. Yeah, we we'll start at verse 8. All right, and it says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land said, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, two parts therein, all right, in all the land of Babylon, Babylon, two parts of the nation of Israel here in the land shall be cut off and die, all right? Now, that two parts is representing the two-thirds of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans here in Northern America, which you, you'll find all 12 tribes here right now to this day, all right? But here the most I saying, he's going to cut two parts off, all right? And again, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8, and this shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts Therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And what does it say, verse 9? And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried, that they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai is my power. And this is what we're going to go into, our power. We have a power, all right? Although, all right, we're, we're sustaining all of these attacks, taking all of these hits, these losses, you know, this, this whole world is against us. But the Lord wanted us to know that we're not alone, all right? So as we're being brought as this third part, Lord willing, this is our hopes. This is why we use the term hopeful elect. We're hoping to be of this third part. All right. So we endure this fire. We're, we're being brought through. All right. Whereas this world will say grace on the fire, you know, you on the battlefield, um, undergoing um, fire on fire, uh, gunfire. Or whatever, we're here and in, in, in we're locked in this spiritual battle and we're undergoing, see, we're, we're constantly being shot at with fiery darts. All right. And the Lord did not leave us alone, as he told um, the Apostle Paul here, Second Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to read from chapter 12, beginning at verse 7 here. All right. So again, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. All right, because knowledge does puff it up. Paul, the one told us that. So he said so that he wouldn't be exalted. Through the abundance of revelations, through the abundance of knowledge that he received from, you know, Yahweh Shah himself and through the Holy Spirit. He said that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. 
So it's kind of like the, the Most High put a, a limit, you know, a ceiling of sorts to where Paul, you know, wouldn't get too big for his britches. He could not surpass that. All right. And listen what he said in verse eight. For this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me, that this messenger from Satan that is buffeting me, as Paul stated, would be taken away from me. All right. And here's the Lord's reply. Verse nine. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my, my infirmities that the power of Masiach may rest upon me. All right. And this is what I want to talk about. All right. Which I've done lessons on this in the past. However, right. However, the times that we're coming into, these perilous times that we're in. And they're about to get more treacherous and perilous, right? We really need to understand and know this. And that we can walk in this grace. That our faith may be um, fully nourished and developed as uh, Ephesians 20, uh, 28. Ephesians 2 and 8 states that... Um, for we are saved by grace through faith, all right? And it begins with grace because it has to start off, you have to be favored. And this is all by the Most High's favor. And that's what that verse was. Matter of fact, let's get that too. All right, so we're going to take a look here at Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to go right to the point. This is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is what? The gift of the Most High. All right? And we know even in human nature, you know, that you give gifts to those who you favor, who you like, who you love, who you may want to show appreciation or gratitude towards, or, you know, you just, you just cut for the person, as we say out here. Well, see, the Lord, he cuts for his elect, all right? It's nothing that we did to deserve his appreciation or anything like that, but he just, that John 3 and 16, for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Well, for Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. It's nothing that we did to deserve it or to say that, uh, you know, we should be appreciated for this. No, we, we deserve death in all actuality. We deserve death. But the Lord had it set up that he was going to redeem his people, Israel, again. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans through a remnant. And that's that one part that we read about Zechariah chapter 13 and 9. He's going to redeem the whole nation through that one part that he's bringing through the fire. So we're going to have to show some resolve. We're going to have to show some, some diligence and, and some calm as what's getting ready to transpire transpires. So, again, Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. is nothing that we've done to earn this or to say that we deserve it. No. It's by grace. Grace in itself means a gift or favor. It is the gift of the Most High. So going back, and I'm going to read this again, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. All right. And it's all going back to the love. But in that love is power in that grace is power. All right. Scriptures speak about the manifold grace. 
Because it, it, it don't understand the grace. Is, it, does, it doesn't just do one thing. All right. It is a multifold grace, multi-purpose. All right. The Lord was telling him, I got you. This, my grace is good for that. Oh, you got a thorn in your side? I got it. Apply a little grace. Oh, your woman hurt you, left you, took the kids, you know, hurt you to your core. Put a little grace on it. You lost your job. You know, you getting put out your place, whatever. You can't afford this. Grace. You know, somebody done done you wrong. Grace. Whatever the case, grace. All right? So it's sufficient. It's sufficient for Paul. It's sufficient for us. And this is, this is profound. The Lord said, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. All right? And we, we're going to break that down with that saying. It said, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of my siyak may rest upon me. Now, what Paul is saying, well, first of all, what the Lord was saying, that you can understand Paul's response when you understand what the Lord was saying. So, when we look at the word grace, uh, caris, let's see here, grace, Strong's G, 5485, Charis, 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 you got to roll that R, I can't even roll the R real good right now, let's look at the root, look, Charis, looks like Charu, Strong's G, 5463, Chairo, 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 all right, we go down to outline of biblical usage for Cairo. It says to rejoice, be glad, to rejoice exceedingly, to be well, thrive in salutations, hail, at the beginning of letters, to give one greeting, salute. All right, now, yes, the grace it gives you a reason to be glad. You should be glad that grace was given unto you. All right. This is why the apostles, when you would read in the book of Acts, when they was buffeted, beaten, thrown in prison, they rejoiced. Because they understood this concept of grace. All right. We should always rejoice and be glad. <laughs> Your woman leave you. Call halal. Yahweh by Hashem. Yahweh Shai. You know. Most I take somebody from you, you know, take them, take them on the glory to the spirit world. Rejoice. You know what this truth is. They won't have to endure Jacob's trouble. I mean, we really are in a no lose situation right now. In Yahweh Shai. And that's the key. In Yahweh Shai, there is no lose. He's obtained the victory. So if you're in him, what does that make you? Victorious. So we can't lose. We're going to have to endure. We're going to have to suffer a bit, but rejoice. Be glad. All right. But that ain't what I even want to touch on, but that's a lesson. Going back to caris or charis or that's caros, caris. Whatever, I, you know, however you pronounced it. Um, so we went to the root, which was chairo. So now in the outline of biblical usage for charis, in the uh, first definition is grace. 1A, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. All right. Which goes into the root. You know, bringing out more of the root. Second definition in outline of biblical usage says goodwill, 
loving kindness, favor. And, and, you know, I spoke on that. It starts with the favor of the Lord. His goodwill and loving kindness. All right, 2A says of the merciful kindness by which the Most High, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turn them, turns them to Masiach, keeps, strengthens, increases them in the faith. And that says Christian faith, but you know, all right, Christian faith. Knowledge, affection, and kind uh and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. And so they, you know, they they own it. It's the merciful kindness by which the Most High, exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Masiyah. And that's what exactly what happened to me. Through the divine influence of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, through the Holy Spirit, I was turned to this truth. That was a gift. And I am exceedingly joyful, grateful, glad. All right. The third definition says what is due to grace. 3A, 3A, this spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace. 3B, the token or proof of grace, benefit. Uh, B1, a gift of grace. B2, benefit, bounty. And it says, thanks for benefit, service, services, favors, recompense, reward. All right. So, in understanding that, uh, let's go back here. Okay. Now let's look at perfect. So the Lord said his grace, all right, his goodwill, his favor, which uh, again is manifold. It's also our power. It is our strength. All right, and uh, this is going to help you to further understand. So we're here for strength. Uh, uh, perfect, I'm sorry. We're here for the word perfect. Strong's G, 5048. Tilaio. 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 All right, so when we go down to the outline of biblical usage, we see what? To make perfect, complete. All right? And with the spirit that got on Elder Apostle, Elder Apostle Tahar to say that we are perfect. All right, and you know people don't like, we say we have 100% truth, and you know they don't like us saying that we're perfect. All right, and I knew exactly what he meant when he said it. But right, the grace is what makes us perfect. All right? That don't mean we don't we don't go off. We offend less. But at the same time, well, I say this, the elect, all right? Now, a, a nigga can't argue with this. The elect are perfect. All right? So, yeah, the elect are perfect. That's why they're, they're, they will eventually be delivered. Now, who are the elect? That's yet to be seen. You know, we may have ideas, but it'll all come out in the wash. You know, he'll come in real soon, matter of fact. So, it says to make perfect, complete, right? The Lord spoke about what well, through Paul. Paul, uh, one of his epistles spoke about, it may also be Ephesians. But he said to be truly furnished. All right. Some brothers say thoroughly. 
This is pretty much the same thing. Throughly meaning throughout. You're furnished throughout. All right. Because we are multifold beings. All right. You have to wear many hats sometimes. All right. But the scriptures say throughly furnished in every aspect of your life to be furnished, complete, to be perfected. Right. So it says to make perfect, complete one a to carry through completely. To accomplish, finish, bring to an end. You see, and that's why we talk about the number seven, meaning completion. The number seven also means what? Perfection. All right. Seven can mean complete or it can mean perfect. Because when you're perfect, you can't add nothing to it. If you add something, you make it imperfect. You take away from it, you make it imperfect. That's why the Lord said in the scriptures not to add nor to take anything away. Why? Because it is perfect. As soon as you add something, or you take something away like they do plantation Christianity throughout the world in all of these pulpits. Once you do what they do and add and start taking away, taking away and, and adding, that is to what? To make the word imperfect, which you can't. But in the, in the ears of the hearers, you make it imperfect. And then they could possibly... If they're not like the Bereans, they could possibly um, walk on in that imperfection. This is why we take teaching this truth so serious here at Great Millstone. All right. So, right. That's what the Lord wants to do with us. Make us in the image of his perfected son who comes in the volume of this book. So. Let's read on. Let's read on. Second definition to complete in parentheses perfect. All right. And this is when it talks about. You know, the Lord say my strength is made perfect. Now, uh, 2A says add what is yet wanting in order to render a thing full. And see, now we get into the core. Of what Yahweh Shai told Paul. All right, now let's get this again. Definition 2A add what is yet wanting in order to render a thing full. All right, then 2B to be found perfect, but 2A, we on that's the one we run it with. And I read on the third definition to bring to the end. Gold, in parentheses, gold, you know, like um, establishing and, and uh, achieving goals in life, gold. And it says propose, fourth def definition to accomplish. 4A, bring to a close or fulfillment by event. 4A1 of prophecies of the scriptures. So as mentioned, you know, definition 2A, add what is yet wanting in order to render a thing full. Now, let's go back. Look at it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace, all right, my gift, gift of love, all right, is sufficient for thee. Because Paul was speaking about what? He was, he was complaining about, you know, lacking in a certain area. You know, not lacking in the gospel or lacking in understanding, but it was something, uh, uh, and it seemed like an ailment of sorts, and he didn't go into it specifically. But it was something Paul wanted taken away, but that he mentioned that if it were to be taken away, that he would be exalted above measure. So this was something that was affecting him being fulfilled 
are what? Complete. Perfect. That's what the Lord say, you know, don't worry about it. You're perfected by my grace. So verse 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. It's enough. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So the Lord's strength is going to add to us the thing that is missing to make us whole. His strength. When you can acknowledge, you can humble yourself as Paul did and acknowledge where you're weak. Instead of, you know, we had these, these moments or we get these demons on us where we're going we're gonna to get it on our own. We're going to figure it out. We're going to do it. Everything ain't to be done by us. Sometimes it's for us to fall back to allow grace to fill in the gaps, to pull us through. And this is why Paul gave the response that he gave most gladly. I mean, we read about uh, a joy and, and being glad exceedingly, you know, to, to that effect. What well, Paul saying, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Masiach may rest upon me. Because at the end of the day, it's about Yahweh Shah Masiach. See, if we were to do everything of our own, and that's why I'm glad I read Ephesians 2 and 8, which I didn't go, and I'm going to have to go and get 9 now. But it's, it speaks about that we have nothing to boast of. And this is why Paul was sent that messenger of Satan. But that's how heavy Paul was in the Holy Spirit and in the gospel. That the Most High had to send a messenger of Satan to buffet him because he was, he was heavy in the word. Now with us, it'll be, you know, whatever. It'll, it'll be something else. It could be a physical ailment. You know, it could be you feel like, you know, I'm not an eloquent, eloquent speaker. You know, I, you know, I, I would read, but I'm just not that good a reader. Grace. You know, this or that. Grace, you see, grace eliminates excuses. Because brothers will say all the time, man, you know, I'm, I'm just not that good in grace. Well, all my life I grew up, I couldn't grace. That's all right. The Lord said not many mighty. You know, not, oh, how does it go? But y'all know the scriptures for the sake of this, you know, running too long. But the Lord said he's not calling the best and the brightest, the strongest. And the most no, uh, notable or uh, famous, he's calling the lowly. And I'm putting that in my words, but you're right. There are not many mighty, not many wise, not many noble. Uh, paraphrasing. So, all right. I'm going to go here back to Ephesians, right here. Chapter 2, verse 9. It says, well, I got to get eight, make it make sense. All right, so Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the most high. Why? It says not of works, lest any man should boast. So the Lord is going to have you incomplete here so that we can be completed in Yahweh Shai and his grace. That's why I said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Because that's how it was set up. It was set up that way. So, take solace in this, all right? In your weakness, 
you're far stronger than you can imagine. In your weakness, that's when you're the strongest. When you're in the grace of Yahweh Shai Masiah, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. When you're in his grace, there's nothing, nothing uh, for you to fear. Be bashful about it. That's why the scripture tells us in uh, Hebrews chapter 4. I, I think it's the 13th verse, but let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Because that's what grace does. It gives you boldness. And what Paul said, you know what? I'm no longer um, uh, crying, for lack of a better term, or whining about my infirmities. Now that the Lord had told me this, now I can rather glory in my, my infirmities. And that's what he wants for each and every last one of us who believes. He don't want us to struggle down here. Yeah, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom but what does that have to do with struggling? That means we're going to have to uh, persevere, give diligence. We're going to have to fight. And it, it gets hard at times, but it shouldn't be just a, a constant struggle, you know, if you're in the right perspective. You know, applying grace and, and uh, you know, looking at it from that angle. So uh, now, you are not of works that any man, lest any man should boast. So the Lord, he, you know, and we all are uh, flawed. We have our shortcomings and our infirmities this is why Yahweh Shai was manifest and this is why he made the sacrifice that he made that we would no longer have to live in these infirmities and shortcomings and all of these um, thorns that are in our sides you know yeah on this side but I'm talking about you know that when the time comes we can have life and have it more abundantly without all of these issues. Yeah, we have to go through this now. For the sake of grace and for the sake of faith, we have to go through these things. All right? But yes, uh, with the times that we're coming into, as I mentioned earlier, right, we're coming to these perilous times. Well, we are in perilous times, but it's about to get far more treacherous, far more deadly. All right? So how much more now should you be grasping this concept? All right? We shouldn't have to worry about, you know, like the Sakari packing firearms. That's the world's strength. That's not our strength. Step in your strength. Walk in Yahweh Shah. Who can stop him? You can stop a bullet. They may vest all day long. You know, duck behind cover, seek shelter, you know, whatever. But how you how you stop your house shot? That's our strength. And we weak. Let's get we physically weak, <laughs> mentally weak, spiritually weak. And, and some more or less than others because you got men that have been you know uh, what's the term uh, groomed up and built up in this truth you know but, but we're weak so we need grace all the way around and that's what makes us perfect 
So we have nothing to fear. They got cartels out here where, you know, I'm out here in Texas, you know, cartel. You got all kinds of shit, you know, other states dealing with what they got. Every It's like every state right now is dealing with something. And it's, it's coming to or approaching a crescendo here real soon. And it's going to be every man for himself. All right. What you going to do? Depend on that, that 38. You know, you got your AR-15. You, you figure that's the way. Lord, know we weak. Well, I put it, you know, let me just speak on my behalf. You know, I know I ain't bad. I ain't I ain't no bad, you know, like <laughs> Samuel uh, in Pope Fiction. He said, give me my wallet out of there. And then the, the white dude said, well, which wallet is yours? He said, the one that say bad motherfucker, you know. And on the wallet it said bad motherfucker. See, I know I ain't no bad motherfucker. Of, of left to my own, you know, uh, me me and, and uh, of myself, in and of myself, Salaki. In and of myself, I'm not a bad motherfucker. But in the grace of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, I dare anybody to fuck with me. And that's how I roll. I don't fuck with people. And at the same time, I make sure I get that same respect. It ain't going to turn out good for somebody who think they're going to uh, run up on me. It ain't going to turn out well. I ain't saying what I can do and, and can't do. No, the Lord going to do it. Ain't that what they, what they say at the church? Let go and let God. You know, but you know, for real, some some real talk. I ain't, you know. I I, I just don't worry about that because I know the issues of death belong to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. If it's my time, what, what? my my skill in boxing gonna save me? Uh, my, you know, the, all of the. Uh, Hours I spun at the gun range, that's going to save me. Or the years I put in the martial arts, is that what's going to save me? When it's my time, if it's my time, it's my time. And if it ain't, you better not fuck with me. And so, you know, this is the mindset to adopt. Now, this is the time we're coming to. Jeremiah 30, 30 chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great. So that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. And I just read how in Zechariah 13 and 8. Jacob is going to be saved through the one part that's being brought through the fire in grace. We're gracefully being brought through the fire. All right. And that's how Jacob is going to be saved out of it, but that's how bad that time is going to be. That it's going to take the grace of the Most High. It's going to take his favor. Life is going to have to be gifted to you. And that's good because niggas then took life for granted. Like it's something that they're old. No, what we're old is death pursuant to Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. And we've all sinned, what, in the same chapter? No, 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 no. Romans 3 and 23 tells us that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And we have. But thank Kahalal, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, that we don't come short of his grace because it's through that grace that we will obtain that glory. So although we've fallen short of the glory, 
we, some of us have been gifted with the grace and hopefully we're looking to be saved out of this, this evil time that's coming. Jacob's trouble. It's about to get bad. So, you know, this is just, this is, lesson is just coming as an exhortation for brothers, man. We don't have to fear. That's not our lot. The, the, the lot of the prophet is never to fear. All right? For the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah should be with you. Okay, now that speaks about it. I, I'm not going to go into that. That uh, in these times, our our enemy, the opposition, would would um, seek to wear us out. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Daniel seven and twenty five. All right, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. He, America. So I have to go to, uh, through this for what just took place. This past Sunday, all right? So let's start up at Daniel 7 and 24. And the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings, which are today is the EU. All right? See if I can name them just off the dome. I try to, you know, stay sharp with that. But uh, it's, it's Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Italy, Ireland, France, Greece, Denmark, Spain, and Britain. That's all. That's the 10 kings. The 10 nations of the EU today, formerly of the European Economic Community, which you'll read about also in Daniel chapter 2 as the 10 toes. These are the same 10 kings. All right. So it says, and the 10 horns out of this kingdom are 10 kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. This king is America. All right. Because before America became the powerhouse that it once was known as, it had to subdue who? Um, England. England first. Then the French. And then Spain. And I believe it was that order. England, France, and Spain, which are three of the horns that I named. So they were subdued and uprooted so that America could, well, they had to make way for this new horn coming up. So just so you know, and going into 25, we're speaking about America, that, that king of that horn that came up and subdued three other horns, America. <laughs> All right, so verse 25 says, and he shall speak great words, America, against the Most High. And what did he do? You know, people making a big deal because, oh, Easter Sunday, they done made that Transnational Day, or whatever, the, uh, National Recognition, Trans Recognition, something to that effect. But here's what they don't understand and don't get. Easter was already blasphemous. All right. So this so you can know this is America. It speaks great words against the most high. So people made it about oh, Easter Sunday as if Easter Sunday is so holy. No, it's just that they would proclaim a day like that. Period. On any day of the week, any time of the year. It's blasphemous. And that gives you an idea or an example of what it means when it says, and he shall speak great words against the most high. So as the most high say, a man is not to lay with another man. He makes it, he gives it a day to do that or, you know, to be weird. Because I think it was about trans. I think it was dealing with trans, but, you know, they say, well, oh, you know, moles can get married. Male and female moles can get married. Moles and bows can get married. See, that's speaking great words against the Most High. Where the Most High says one thing, and then you go back, again, adding and taking away from the perfection, and you make it imperfect. And just as I stated, 
people run with that in this imperfection, defiling themselves. Defiling, yeah, defiling themselves. So he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Why? By vexation of spirit. Then we got to still slave in this kingdom. But that vexation of spirit way heavy, more heavier to me at times than the physical labor. Because it's like, God, you know, man, you get like, that, that stuff weighs on you. Weighs on your conscience. It, it weighs on your uh, physiology. Wickedness. You know? That's why wicked people age faster than, than righteous people. Yeah, but yeah, that's vexation of spirit and all of these other hoops that we as Hebrew Israelite men have to jump through. Now, women get certain benefits and, and um, help in this kingdom, but as, as a Hebrew Israelite man, shit, we out here by the grace of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So I just wanted to bring that out and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. That represents 350 years that we served, you know, this man in chattel slavery. All right, but the point that I want to bring out here is that it says, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So I know you tired. I know you weary. You know, it's been, it's been a long journey for a lot of us. Invoke that grace. You understand? And uh, I'm going to close that verse. Well, right here. And just so you can understand. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And that all comes by his grace. But we weren't given the, the spirit of fear. It said, but of power. And we read about that. Um, the Lord said, oh, what did he say? Oh, that the power of Masiach may rest upon me. Paul stated, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Masiach may rest upon me. All right. And so 2 Timothy 2 and 1 is why Paul had uh, wrote this to Timothy. For Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power through the grace. You don't have to be fearful. Well, even if it's, it's time for us to lay down our life. Hey, I most gladly, you could take it as if I'm living here. Yeah, it's a constant. Every day I'm worn down, worn out, beat up, used, abused, and, and stepped over. But, hey, the show must go on. So, you know, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power through the grace, through Yahweh Shai's grace, and of love, also through the grace, and of a sound mind, all right, which comes from knowing this gospel, which is grace. We only know it by grace. That, that, now that goes to Isaiah 33 and 6. For wisdom and knowledge 
should be the stability of thy times. Stability also goes into soundness of mind. But it also goes on to say in Isaiah 33 and 6, and strength of salvation. Now what did we read in Ephesians 2 and 8? For we are saved, our salvation shall well by we for we are saved by grace through faith. And so Isaiah 33 and 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, soundness of mind, and strength of salvation, for we are saved by grace through faith. All right. And so So like I was just thinking about something, but yeah. Um, yep, yeah, that we'll, we'll end it right there. Yeah, in the sound mind, and that's it. That's it. I just want to make sure I crossed all my T's, dotted all my eyes, and so you know, that's the lesson for the day. And I pray that you, I can, can get some use out of this message. You know. Hey, with that, on to the next one, Shalom and the Habitham.